The book for today is a collection of the author's commentaries on local, national, and global issues. It is titled, as I was saying, a compendium of my public intervention write-ups about Nigeria 2010 to 2020, written by Kayo de Adejumobilu and published in 2021 by Bibliophilia Ibadan. The author, Kayo de Adejumobilu, is a public affairs commentator, he is a professional biographer and creative writer with experience in publishing and development of young writers. In this book, the author writes about personalities, politics, policies, sports, and music. For instance, from the very first chapter of this book, Kayode opens with the lamentation lays musings about the death of Ghani Fawaimi and the failure of the healthcare system to properly diagnose his ailment. The writer writes about the failure of Nigeria to make the cut for the 2010 FIFA World Cup in South Africa and wonders that the billions invested in that failed venture would have fixed critical infrastructure here at home. The author muses about his general frustrations about the failure of governance in Nigeria and the attendant lack of direction by those in government. Hear this, I quote now. In those days, when governance was as basic as building schools, hospitals and roads, our leaders failed us. How much more now that governance has evolved to a sophisticated act of polish, refinement, when you have to build systems and initiate paradigms to gather intelligence, analyze data, and have development figures at your fingertips? When you have to be globally compliant and resourceful and tackle terrorism and natural disasters, and all we have is a gauge. Boy, we go here when... He follows with a catalog of missed opportunities, dashed hopes, and how he has never enjoyed any benefit from being a Nigerian, even when he pays taxes and levies. In this book, as I was saying, Kyle de Adejumobilo writes copious about the Fuji legend Sikirua in the Barista. He here presents a fitting eulogy of and tribute to the exceptional Fuji maestro, Agbajelola his intimate relationship with Barista and also makes a case for what he describes as a Barista Fuji Chamber Museum, stating that it is a must-do project. Making allusions to similar legacy projects like the Queen Victoria Museum, Marcos Gave Park, W.E.B. Duboa Museum in Central Accra, and the Apartheid and Nelson Mandela Museum, Kayode calls upon all critical stakeholders and government to erect such in the name of Barista, to attract tourists and for Nigerian and African diaspora to rediscover their roots. You are still listening to Book Splash on Splash FM 105.5 and I am discussing the book. As I was saying, a compendium of my public intervention write-ups about Nigeria 2010 to 2020 written by Kayode Adejumo Belu. In this book, the author writes about places and their fading facilities like the Obudukatu Ranch. He writes about elections and electioneering in Nigeria with his concomitant intrigues about fuel subsidy, fuel scarcity and about good luck Jonathan and his quote-unquote juvenile politics. The author particularly shows in this work his dislike for the man. In one of the chapters of the book, the author writes that Jonathan lacks the pace required of this dispensation. In fact, he insists, and I quote, he won't have no blame if in four years all he has to show is more of nothing. End of quote. The author also writes about various persons in this book. Such persons include Ojuku Rashidi Yekini and MKO Abiola. Talking MKO Abiola, the author thinks it is a great disservice to humanity and the memory of Abiola himself that he did not write an autobiography. For the author, without any biography in his name, Abiola will, quote unquote, count no more than mere myth in a few years to come. In this book, the author writes about yet more political figures in the country. He writes about Aketi, that is the Odo State Governor, Rotimi Akeridolu, as the next big thing in Nigerian politics, about Senator Femilan Lenny and his cross carpeting acts, and Ayodele Fayoshi, whose guts and ability to pamper the masses the author salutes. The author writes about the poise and polish of Dr. Bukola Saraki and his wish to see Saraki as the President of the 8th Senate. The author also dedicates space. In this book to Ashiwa Jubola Ahmed Tinubu, whose exploits during the Nadeko years, the 2000 
and three conquests against Obasanjo and striking potent strategies he praises. The author also plays up his advocacy for Sheyima Kinde to be given the Oyo PDP gubernatorial ticket in 2015. Still, on Kaode's roll call of politicians, we have in this book essays on Aki Umiambodi and Babatunde Fashola. You are still listening to Book Splash on Splash FM 105.5. The book on the table is, as I was saying, written by Kaode Adejumo Bilo. In this book, the author laments the poverty that pervades the land. For him, poverty is a culture and philosophy that has become an entrenched government policy in statemanship. His dirge here is that our existence is a continuum of everyday sorrow, tears and blood, and life is short, cruel and brutish. However, the author poses that the crux of the matter is that to get out of poverty is through appropriate knowledge, that is, the elevation of education. But he believes that the failure is more about our poor or lack of reading culture, our aversion to books. In this book, the author also writes extensively about two personalities, Atiku Abubakar and Muhammadu Buhari. In the book, the author states that in 2015, the two needed to contend with formidable skepticism, character questions and unsavory public opinion. While he seems to have the same perspective about Atiku, he seems to have changed his mind about Muhammad Buhari, the candidate and the president. Oh, I see. So we have the author here, Kaode Adejumobilu, the author of the book, as I was saying. Welcome to Book Splash. Thank you, Mr. Moderator and uh, producer. Let's start with why you wrote this book. I know it's a collection of essays and articles that you've written over time, in fact, over 10 years. Yeah. But why did you decide to put all these essays together in one uh, volume? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, good evening, listeners at home. My name again is Kaode Adeju Mobelo. The book, as I was saying, actually is expression of my frustration with policies and governance of Nigeria. I was an activist when I was on the campus of the University of Ibadan. I was in the student union and uh, it is to the credit of my generation that we fought the military government of then to a standstill. As we joke about it, we actually confronted their machine guns bare-chested. We didn't have guns. We didn't have cutlasses, but we were able to push the military back to the barracks. Mm. And we thought we had done very well. Then came the so-called democracy. And before our very eyes, it was turning to something grave. Mm. We were definitely disillusioned. My generation is disillusioned. If you like to use the word frustrated, so it is out of that frustration that I decided to put pen to paper and make commentary about things as they unfold. Because again, at our age, we may not be able to march on the street again mm. to confront them. Unfortunately, even if we had wanted to, the current government or the succeeding government had grown worse than the military. Some of the things that we did against the military, you'll be shocked that you can't do them even now that we claim to have democracy. Mm. So it's an avenue to let out anger, to let out frustration. Mm. So in this book, you wrote about Ganifa Wemi, you wrote about uh, Ujuku, you wrote about Good Luck Jonathan, uh, you wrote about uh, Fashola, you wrote about Tinubu, you wrote about uh, Aketi, uh, mm. that's Rotimi Akeridoli, you wrote mm. about Sheyi Makinde. Mm. But before I go to the other ones, what you wrote about Good Luck Jonathan really struck me. You seem to have special, you know, special aversion for the man. Mm. What exactly did he do to you? Now, between 2010 and uh, some few years back, it pleased God to give the mantle of leading Nigeria to Good Luck Jonathan. I should tell you as a background that when the then president Yaradua was sick, and they refused to hand over to Good, Good Lord Jonathan. Jonathan. I led a protest for him. Beyond that, in my closet, 
I was praying and fasting for him. I can tell you here that I did seven days fasting for Jonathan. He didn't know me. I have not met him till today. Mm. So I committed so much hope to him. And like the Bible says, or as we all know, too much is given, much was expected. Again, Jonathan was the first person who could claim to be a proper graduate that ruled Nigeria. So I expected so, so much until our brother came and he was playing juvenile politics. Everything was political. He had the mindset of the minority. Sorry to use that word. What I mean to say is everybody was against him in his mind. Mm. And then his policies were reactionary. Okay. I thought we have a great leader in such a well-trained person. I thought he was one of us. Mm. So you can imagine the frustration coming out as he did. Mm. You were not expecting so much from him, really. Mm. You mm. wrote somewhere in the book, you won't have no blame. If in four years, all he has to show is more of nothing. Mm. It was so strong. Those mm. words are so strong for me. <laughs> because after looking at him for the first few years, you know, he completed the Yaradua's yeah. presidency. Yes. Then you could now say that in those few months, his presidency was made. How? He was moving us backward. Mm. Whereas he had the chance to move us at jet pace. Unfortunately, now with the benefit of the hindsight, uh, <laughs> we know what we are going through now. But the truth is, with the choices we had in 2015, we will still vote against Jonathan mm. because he did not promote the common patrimony. His presidency was for the tiny people around him. Okay, in this book, you also wrote about life in Nigeria and uh, the failure of leadership. Mm. You even wrote somewhere that you've never benefited anything from government. So yeah. your your own local government, your your own uh, water corporation, your your own uh, power company, yeah. your virtually everything. You can't. You are say very that. angry at leadership in Nigeria. Mm. How did we end up in this hole? You can say that again and again. I went to school when my parents had to pay. That was in the military era. I paid through secondary school. I paid through university. Ordinary common taking my passport, I paid. My electricity in my house, I paid. I was the water corporation of my home. I was the NEPA of my home. And then there is nothing you could just say, oh, my government is going to do for me. Sometimes it go in those, those, those days. I went out of the country. I lost my uh, tickets. It was before the advent of uh, internet. internet and stuffs. I had to pay Nigerian government for coming to pick me from, from Italy then. I was not a criminal. I just misplaced my document and my visa had expired. So I had to leave. The Nigerian embassy was contacted and lo and behold, I was made to sign an undertaking that I would pay when we get to Lagos. It's as bad as that. So you can imagine my frustration. After school then, you thought you had hand a right to leave only to come out and you see wow this is a jungle and then you begin to pay all over again and it is getting worse every day the whole world is running to the front we are running very very seriously to the back mm. very unfortunate in one section of the book i love it so much of course this uh, from the sound of the write-up mm. uh you will sense that it was before the 2015 election Mm. And your headline here is neither Muhammadu Buhari nor Atiku Abubakar. Mm. Uh, you say that as formidable as they are, however, they ha also have to contend with formidable skepticism, mm. character questions, and the unsavory public opinion. Mm. In the case of General Buhari, he is seen as a religious bigot, a jihadist, and radical. I don't know how the toga came to be, but unfortunately, it has stuck. So, I know that at some point in your life, you supported Buhari, the candidate. Mm. What happened to you from 2015 to 2020? Oh, yeah. Something must have happened. Okay. What is it? Because we were so desperate to let 
our brother Jonathan go. And the only choice we had was to vote him out. Unfortunately, again, the Nigerian system, those who puppeteered the system, gave us to choose between Atiku and Buhari against Jonathan. Now, if we had better choices, it would be neither Buhari, it will not be Atiku. Because of what I said, it was obvious that Buhari did not have the mental capacity. It was obvious he was a bigot. If you had left power since 1984 and you did not write one lecture, you did not deliver any, we didn't see you anywhere, the PTF thing you did is a controversy. But then, because there was a very deep lack of personality, we ended up having to choose between the devil and the deep blue sea. We had to choose between bad and very bad. So we chose to choose bad. We thought somehow because of the coalition of forces behind him, mm. the team that produced him, the Ashiwaju camp, the progressive camp that came together to package Buhari for us, we thought somehow along the line he may have become a changed person. Also, that if he could work with that rainbow coalition, mm. it's possible the team will lead us further. Unfortunately, after six months, we saw that we had entered one chance. In six months, our brother could not name his cabinet. In six months, our brother could not give us any direction. In six months, uh, the goodwill had evaporated. It was just a matter of time then before he began to mess the country up. Unfortunately, the juries are out. Now, we know where we were before him. We know where we are now. Thankfully, in the next one and a half years, his time will be up. And then, we will talk about him fully. It's still Book Splash on Splash FM 105.5. In some sections of the book, as I was saying, Kayode appears to have very long canes for the Nigerian brand of religiosity. Yeah. He writes, and I quote, We became a nation of cannibals and charlatans, yeah. yet we can't stop peddling God. Now we cannibalize one another, and we are all Bible, Quran, carriers. No more trust, no more reliability. So much God, so, so little, little goodness. God. In the other section of the book tagged, Religion has failed. So, so resoundingly, the author writes that we need to dump the two religions and find the one true God. In this place, <laughs> you have grudges against religion and religious leaders <laughs> in Nigeria. <laughs> Tell me about this. When we were growing up in the 80s, we had very few churches in Ibadan. I could name them, the Methodist Church there, the Anglican Church here, and all of that. And we were godly. I went to my friends who were Christians we ate. They came to our house we ate. We were brothers and sisters. There were very few cases of armed robbery, no or virtual no cases of 419 or stuffs. You can trust. You can once this guy says I'm a Christian, you can trust him. Or this guy says I'm a Muslim, you can trust him. Now if somebody tells me I'm a pastor, I run away. Somebody tells me I'm a Christian or I'm a Muslim. It becomes deadly because you may just be playing with the snake. These things are so bastardized, you wonder, what are you guys telling us? In those days when there were very few churches and very few less noise about religion, we had peace. Now everybody is a jihadist. Now everybody is a crusader. And yet it is not rubbing off on our moral fabrics. You can't trust nobody. Even your wife, who is a mother in Israel in the church, will come to the house and give you hell. Even your husband, who is a deacon, will be going about with side chicks. So why religion? Why don't we find God? That is my thought. How do we find this God? Before the two religions came, our parents were godly. You cannot tell me they were not. You can't tell me they were idol worshippers. They gave them bad name. They were leading with their conscience. Their conscience was alive. And they were interacting with God. And the society was the better for it. Now we have to go to Rome. And we have to go to Mecca. We stopped going to Shobo. We stopped coming to... And then, here we are. 
I posit that if everybody can find their way to God, less of religion, more of godliness, then we'll have goodness in our society. How can you say somebody who, are, who married two wives cannot be a pastor, but you want to ordain somebody who is a gay? Does it make sense? Somebody is gay. A man making love with a man. A woman making love with a woman. But you can ordain him as a pastor. But somebody who married more than one wife is condemned. It doesn't make sense. That is religion. That is not God. Mm. Wow. Mm. I'm still speaking with Kyle De Adejimo Belu, the author of this book, as I was saying. Mm. In a scathing thesis about the death of leadership in the country, the author regrets that, quote, what we have now are rulers with their big bulging pot bellies filled with the corrupt enrichment and they feast upon our common patrimony. Still on leadership, <laughs> how can we get it right? Truth is, uh, in 1983, there about when President IBB then said we have to do political bureau, we have to start all over again. We thought we were in for a good ride. And initially, it was well monitored. However, for political reasons or ambition reasons, demand derailed. I think, okay, before I tell you what I think, when Baba Wilo of Blessed Memory was contacted to make submission to the political bureau, he told them, and his prophecy is still on, he said our moral fabric is constantly and consistently getting worse. He said that we are becoming, a, we are reaching the stage of impunity. He said something told him loud and clear that we had embarked on a journey with no fruit in sight, something like that. Unfortunately, that is what has happened to us. Can we then go back to the beginning and reset? Can a government come and say, I will be here for four years, but before the end of the four years, we will talk about uh, our country. We will reform the country politically, socially. We will reform the constitution. And uh, but if you keep going like this, uh, there is no way out of this mess. It will go worse because the next election is there. But the country is as it is. Ten Jesuses, like Baba Basan just said, ten Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam cannot run this country as it is. Ten Abraham Lincoln cannot run this country as it is because then it will be about a person not about a system that works so what system will work restructuring regional whatever uh, that people are saying what system will work in nigeria when it is impossible to i forgot how to say it a practical example will suffice now we have gone through unitary system we have gone through federalism we have gone through journalism. We have done it all. But every Nigerian that is sane knows when we were operating as regions, we had more progress. The truth is, what Nigeria is still counting on now as greatness was done in the years when we were running uh, regions. The greatness of Yorubas was endowed during the regions when Baba Wilowo held sway. If we have done that and it had worked, then it is no rocket science to think that maybe it is better for uh, these groups to come together and rule themselves according to their special needs. The Aussars can do what they want to do. The Igbos can do what they want to do. The Yerubas should do what they want to do. We are still Nigeria. Okay, if we must remain in Nigeria, then the system should be such that each region will be given full expression. That's mm. what I think. All right, so you are involved in promoting, you know, uh, creativity now. You are mm. encouraging young people and the rest of it. Mm. I like that very, uh, very idea. So, um, tell me, uh, why did you decide to go that way, to nurture young writers? My son shocked us. We were checking his things and we saw that he had a diary which he was keeping faithfully. The mom was shocked. I was not. It showed to me that he can write and he had stamina. 
because he was writing every day. So I now encourage him, why don't you put together stories and then I will publish it to mark your 10th birthday. My boy did two books to mark his 10th birthday. Thereafter, a school called me and said, what you did with your son, please do it with our students. They gave me 120 students hmm. and we produced writers of them. So when I came to Ibadan in 2017, I decided to now do an, an Oyo State wide thing. So we invited schools from Oyo State and we did the first Ibadan Young Writers Summit. Hmm. The summit produced an academy. The students themselves wrote a book which Oyo State government had approved as a test uh, for junior secondary schools in the state. Mm. It is titled Niba Danlawa. Mm. So, it's been exciting. The gist is, our thought is, not everybody will become superstars playing football or doing hip-hops or doing celebrity things. Yeah. You can also become a celebrity author. You can win laurels writing. You can be the next Wale Shoyenka. You can be the next Chimamanda Adichie. That is what has been pushing us to so, produce the next generation of writers. So what's up next for you after this book, as I was saying? Nigeria keeps evolving. We will not stop saying. Because sometime in the future, they will ask, what did you do when Nigeria was going like this? Mm. That's why we put this together. We hope in our lifetime, Nigeria will come around. If not, they will know that we said something. As we move on by the grace of God, We'll expand the frontiers of our uh, operation. We do more books by the grace of God. We'll produce greater writers. Who so we take up from where we might be stopping. God willing. Kayode mm. Adejumo Belu is the author of this book, as I was saying. Mm. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Ultimately, this book is a collection of the author's musings about various issues about which the author has strong opinions. And he has been able to perfectly drive home his points. There are over 76 different issues covered in this book. And in 160 pages, the author powerfully pushes his points convincingly and in conventional, conversational, non-formal English for the delight of all. That was my conversation with Kyle the Adeju Bello, author of the book, as I was saying. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did... Please join me same time next Saturday for another edition of Book Splash on Splash FM 105.5 Ibadan. I thank you for listening and thanks to my sound manager, Victor Daudu. And I have five copies of this book to give out to the first five text messages that I received today. So if you'd like to receive a copy of this book, as I was saying, text me your name and location to 0805 699 Please note, the first five text messages that I receive will get a copy each. In case you have questions or queries, please send me a text message 0805 699 8676 or email m or latumbosun at splashfm1055.com. I am Michael or latumbosun. I urge you to read the book today.